Ashley with Voice for Nations, and we are here on set of Boxes. I'm standing here with Jason Wynn, director of Boxes. Can you tell me how you got involved in this incredible movie? Sure, sure. Uh, I did a film called The Fat Boy Chronicles, and Mike Buchanan had written that movie. And we had actually done Boxes for a contest in Macon called uh, Get Ready Macon. And it went pretty far in the contest, but it mm -hmm. wasn't chosen. And so a lot of people were like, man, you really should make that. And so we decided that uh, with crowdfunding and things like Kickstarter and, and those things, we're like, well, we'll try and get this done. And the response that we had was amazing. So we were able to raise money to do the picture. And then what we want to do with the picture when it's finished is you let people in churches and organizations and nonprofits kind of use it to open up discussions for heavier topics. And so sometimes in a short film or in art, you're able to take that and transcend what could be a really complicated subject. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an icebreaker. So if you're in a big group or something and you're trying to raise money for awareness or whatnot, sometimes it's nice, hey, we're gonna watch this little you know, 15 minute movie and then afterwards we can have our presentation. But you're getting away from PowerPoint, you're getting away from all these other things and it's just a, a neat opportunity. So very blessed with a, a great cast and crew and uh, it's just been awesome. Great, what do you like most about directing the film? Uh, for me, directing the film is all about the process. I, I love it. Um, I've been rehearsing with the actors and to see it really come together on set. And then I love spending time with my DP and talking about shots. And we sit down and we're like, ooh, what about this? And we'll put the kids here <laughs> yeah. and then we'll do this. And we write it all down on paper and then we just kind of execute our plan. So it's a lot like being the captain of a ship. And by the time I get here, really, I'm just sitting in a chair making sure that the plan's going to according yeah. to, to how it's supposed to. So. That's great. What do you hope people take away from the film? Um, I hope people take away from the film uh, a sense of, as adults, sometimes we forget how our actions translate to our children. And I mm -hmm. think that it's really important that in, in doing those things, and in sometimes in doing what we believe to be the right thing, can also be the wrong thing. And I'm not talking about being hyper-focused on, on what is right or wrong, but just take the time to smell the flowers and, and take the time to enjoy life because it's too fast. And I know that these are hard times for a lot of people and all of us are, are experiencing, you know, different troubles. And so just, I would like to say for people to, you know, just enjoy their time and enjoy their family and, and not take it for granted. Wow, okay. Well, thank you My for pleasure. allowing us thank to be you. on set. What no, y'all are doing awesome. is amazing. Thank you, I gotta get back, okay. so. Thank awesome. you. Hi. I'm standing here with Mike Buchanan, producer of Boxes. Tell me what your role of producer is. Uh, well, producing, it means a lot of things. Like, in a little bit, we're going to be filming outside, so it means getting the wagons and the flowers and all the stuff that would be in a scene besides the actors. Okay. And, and my other role is that I wrote the screenplay for this also. And so, so you know, when you write, and then uh, a lot of times you get pulled in to do pr production, which is fine, it's fun. What do you like most about writing? Uh, the most exciting part is to see it come alive. I mean, you know, when I'm writing the scenes, I have images in my head of how I picture it, but then next thing you know, you're on set and there's somebody saying the lines and there's all these people around because of something you sat by yourself and wrote when, you know, over the course of a few weeks. So it's, uh, it's really cool. Mike, tell me what your plans are for distribution. How are people going to be able to view this film when it's ready? Right. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is make it available to nonprofits that work with, with the homeless or any nonprofit that would like to use this to show, to do a screening, to as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. If it's anywhere around the South or around Atlanta where we're filming, a lot of us are from here, then some of us, you know, will we'll be glad to go and, and participate in a fundraiser if that's the case. It'll be uh, online and we're also going to be submitting to film festivals around the nation so that when we're in a film festival, hopefully, fingers crossed, then when we're in that city, then we want to make those people that work with the shelters aware of, of this film. And uh, so, you know, the, the sky is the limit on, on where this can go. What do you hope people take away after watching this movie? Uh, I hope they, in, in, in light of the last few years in our nation, understand that a lot of people are just a few bad breaks away from having to live a life they had never thought they would be living. One of the things in doing research for this that I've come to understand is how many people that are having to live in homeless shelters or on the street a month or two before had a job, had a house, things were fine. And uh, 
and how quickly life can turn on you. So if someone were to come into contact with somebody who was homeless, is there any specific actions that they can take to help the situation? You probably should educate yourself about what to do as because I think a lot of times people, whatever the issue is, they think that it, if they do their good deed for the, for the month, then, then it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind again. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't, uh, I think it needs to be more of an ongoing mindset as opposed to, oh, I'm going to check off the box that said I did something good for somebody today. If you don't change the way you think about people in the world, then a lot of this isn't going to change. Well, and that's really what Voice for Nations believes. We are trying to influence people and let them know that they really can make a difference. Yes. So we really appreciate oh, you all having us on thank, today. You bet. Thank you so much for being here. Thank this has you. been wonderful. Thank you. I'm standing here with Matt Stivers, who plays the role of Uncle Robbie. Matt, tell me how you got into acting. Well, uh, I'm currently going to UNCA. That's uh, University of North Carolina in Asheville. And I've been studying video production as well as acting. Um, and I, I consider this a major role just because Jason Wynn, his uh, film Fat Boy Chronicles was superb and, and so I was really excited to work with somebody of that caliber and they're using a red camera which is really exciting for all you nerds out there. Um, so so this, is, this is kind of my, my first step and I'm really happy about this one because I think it's a real solid foundation. Matt, can you give us some advice of what you would tell inspiring actors, especially children, who want to get involved in the industry? Well, if you live in Atlanta, you're in a great location. I grew up, I grew up in Atlanta and then I moved to North Carolina and now all this work is coming to Atlanta. So, um, you know, first thing is, is you can make movies with your cell phone these days. So get your friends and start making movies, especially if you want to be more of a director. Um, that's great experience and seeing yourself on a screen is going to teach you a lot. Uh, and then the second thing is I don't have an agent yet so I'm paying dues by running around doing the extras work and that's great. So that's going to teach you how to work with people and how to work with a camera uh, and then after you get a few credits be an extra then you go for an agent and that's when you get rich and famous like that <laughs> okay no I'm just kidding it, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time but for those of you that just you know that's what you want to do it's what you're gonna do <laughs> I'm here speaking with Trace who plays the role of one of the brothers named Sean Trace tell me how you got involved in acting well I was like in my house and I was watching this TV show and I saw they were having a lot of fun on it, so um, I started doing acting class. And then I started going on casting websites, and um, I saw this on the ca casting website, and um, I auditioned and I got the role. Congratulations! That's exciting. How old are you? I'm eight. Eight? And how long have you been acting? Um, three years. Wow. So you've been doing this a while then. Most of your life, it probably feels like. What's your favorite thing to do? Um, well, I'm interested in collecting antiques. That's neat. I really like them because I want to have like a timeline of the past. I don't hear that from a child very often. Tell me about that. Um, well, like I was watching the um, a show on history and I said, oh, this is really cool. And then I just started going to antique stores, yard sales, and flea markets. And oh my goodness. It's really just cool. Well, good. Well, thank you so much for being here, and congratulations on your role in the movie boxes. I'm speaking with Scott Seeky, who's one of the producers of the movie. How did you get involved in this incredible film? Mike Buchanan and I met years ago. We were both writers who were just getting started, and we just met at a coffee shop and then we kind of got to know each other and he introduced me to Jason and when Mike told me that he was writing boxes um, it's a subject I'm very passionate about very passionate about uh, the homeless and, and, and loving and serving the homeless and so I felt like this was a story that I had to make happen mm -hmm. so uh, they asked me if I could help by, by getting some funding together and finding some people to make it happen so I just I couldn't say no. That's awesome. How does this relate to your life at home? You know it's about family Right? And so I have a family. I have two children and I have a wife and I wonder what am I teaching my children? 
how am I how am I teaching them to live by the way I live? And that's what boxes is about. So it really struck a chord with me as I think it will with any parent. Wow, wow. So tell us what you do outside of producing movies. Well, I, I write. Um, I've got a I helped write the movie Get Low, which shot here in Atlanta, and I'm also pastor of the River Church, okay. which is here in Alpharetta. Wow. And we're a little church plant, just got started a few years ago, but it's an exciting ministry. And homeless, serving the homeless is an important part of what we do as a church. So my church was very excited to hear that this was happening. I bet, congratulations. Thank you. So as a producer, you're totally behind camera. Tell us a little bit about the day-to-day -day operations. Well, a producer's job is to make everybody else able to do their job. Uh, so we get all the resources, find the people, uh, raise the funds, figure out where it's gonna be. It, it's, you really don't do anything when you're a producer. You put other people in a position to do well. And so that's been my job, is to help raise funds, uh, find folks, uh, help with casting, and just be the kind of behind the scenes person who helps point people in the right direction to make this movie the amazing movie it is. Tell me what kind of impact you want the viewers to take from this. I think there's two things. First thing I like for people to do is to think about how they live and the choices that, that they make. What, what are you doing in your own life? How do you treat your own family and the people around you? And the second thing is to really think about homelessness. I mean, how do people get there? It's not as simple as we who, who don't know the person, who don't know the situation like to think. It's often very complicated. And so I hope that, that it will make people think about why people are homeless and really how they live their own lives. Do you have any advice to give people if they were to come into contact with somebody who was homeless? In my experience, in the homeless people that I've gotten to know, and I, I have friends who are still on, on the streets now, um, I think that one of the important things is just, these are people. Mm -hmm. And they have made good choices in their life, and they've made bad choices in their life, just like anybody else has. And so, just get to know them. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody can use a friend, right? Everybody mm -hmm. can use a supporter, everybody can use somebody who's gonna love them and care for them. And that's really what I'd say, is, is don't look at what they look like, just get to know them and treat them like you would wanna be treated. Wonderful. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I just want to say for all of us that are working with Boxes that we want to thank Voice for Nation so much for your involvement uh, to make this possible. I, I feel very confident that what you're already doing is making a difference in people's lives. And then after this film, we'll, we will all continue to do so. So thank you so much.